What's going on everybody? This episode we're going to talk about constructors. This is a pretty important concept to understand. This is what is invoked when you create an object. The instantiation process is done through a constructor. It's kind of just like a function, but with the sole purpose of creating that object. So let's go ahead and just code out some examples so you can see what this looks like. This video is sponsored by Visual Assist, designed to fill in the gaps of Visual Studio. So improvements in searching, navigation, IntelliSense, refactoring, and more. So if you're building in C++ or you're following this series with Visual Studio, definitely check out the link down below. So here we have code that is going to create a deck or some collection. You could use a vector if you prefer, and it'll create a temporary food object and then it's going to read from foods.txt, reading the name of the food and the cost of the food and create an object and put it inside of the saved foods collection. Lastly, we will print all of the foods. So where does the constructor come in? Well, when we say food temp, whatever you may call that, this is invoking a constructor. It's like a function designed for creating objects. So this is created for us automatically. However, we can make a custom one if we wish. So the syntax for this is going to be no return, so just the function name, and the function name is going to match the class exactly. So it'll look like this. And we'll say constructor hit. And this will just prove that I'm not missing something in that this actually is being executed. So it reads all of these and you can see constructor hit at the top. So when the object is created that first time, that's when the constructor is hit. All of the other times, it is just reassigning values to name and cost. It's not creating a new object. By the way, this is our foods.txt file if you need that. So the awesome part about constructors is it can allow us to pass in specific data to the constructor. So we could have the user pass in a string of name and a double of cost. And inside of here, we can assign it to that object. So that way, our object is initialized immediately with some values. To do this, we'll say name and assign it some value, specifically the name parameter. Now, this is a potential problem because the first one here, I want to refer to this here. The second one here, I wanted to refer to this here. To be more specific and say, hey, we want this to refer to that attribute on the object, we will use the this keyword followed by an arrow. So a minus sign and then a greater than sign. We'll do something very similar for the cost. So we'll say this cost is cost. However, we're not quite able to run this code yet. You see, we will get some errors. The main problem is now when we define a custom constructor, the default constructor no longer exists. This is kind of strange. Why does it create it for us automatically unless we create some variation, then the default one doesn't exist? Well, if you can imagine a scenario where I only want an object to be created through this certain custom function, and we don't want that default one to actually exist at all, all you have to do is create a custom one. Then we never have to worry about that object being in an only partially initialized state. It's always going to go through the same process to be fully initialized. Initialized, I'm using that word kind of vaguely. It could mean anything you want, but the main thing is in this scenario, assigning it some values to the data members. If you want to have that default constructor, even though we have a custom one, you can make two constructors, just another overload, it's going to look very similar where we just have food and in this case it can be an empty body. This will allow our code to run as it did before without any changes. So far so good. So how do you actually use this other constructor we created? Well, when we invoke food temp, you can use parentheses here passing in two values. Let's just say test and 25. That is how you would invoke that custom constructor. Doesn't really make a lot of sense here because it's just going to be overwritten down here. So instead of defining the food object here, we will do it inside of the loop. So inside of pushback, we can say 
food and use parentheses right here after the type passing in the values. So let's say instead of temp.name and temp.cost, we just had those variables and double cost and we just read into those directly. Now we can pass these variables to that custom constructor. So name comma cost. This should in theory work the same way. It's just a different structure and it allows you to understand custom constructors. Perfect. So the default constructor can be used to initialize things to some default value. So if you wanted every single thing to have, you know, cost being set to zero, that is where you would do this. There's an alternative way of doing it though as well, which is up here, you can initialize these to some defaults. So you could set the cost to zero as default. So you can set any default custom values there and you could do the same thing for the name as well. That's your introduction to constructors. The next video, we're going to talk about the static keyword, which is really important. So stay tuned. I'll see you in the next video.